Hello everyone, my name is Daksh Tharod and I am going to talk about trace caches. But before directly starting with trace caches, let me brief you a little about caches. So what is a cache memory? A cache is basically a component that stores the data so that your future requests for that data can be served faster. So the CPU accesses the data from cache memory because the time taken to access the data from main memory is much larger. Also the caches are smaller and faster than the main memory. So a question might arrive in your mind that how are cache memory faster than the main memory? The reason is that the cache memory is made up of SRAM and the main memories are made up of DRAM. The DRAM needs to be refreshed periodically to keep the data. So it takes some cycles. Also the caches are on the same die or they are nearer to the processor. So they are comparatively faster. Also the another question might arrive that why don't we then replace the entire main memory by cache memory. The reason is that caches require large power and they are much costlier than main memory. So you simply cannot replace the cache memory by main memory. So now we know that what caches are. Let's have a look how to measure their performances. So we can measure the cache performance with the help of following parameters. The first parameter is hit, miss, hit rate, hit time, miss rate and miss time. So let's have a look at each of them individually. What is a cache hit? If the desired item is present in the cache then it's called a cache hit. If the desired item that you want is not present in the cache it's a miss. Hit rate is the probability that your item is present in the cache. Hit time is the time required to deliver that item. Miss rate is the probability that the item is not present in the cache. So it is obvious that it is 1 minus hit rate. Miss time is the time to deliver that item if it's not present in the cache. So in order to improve the cache performance, we need to increase the hit rate, we need to decrease the hit time, the miss rate and the miss time. So what is the motivation for the need of trace caches? From the previous slide we know that we need to reduce the hit time. Also in high performance superscalar processors, you need to have high increase instruction fetch bandwidth, low instruction fetch latency. So for that we need high branch prediction accuracy and high branch prediction throughput. So these are some of the reasons why the trace caches were invented. Now that we know why we need trace caches, let us try to understand them. Each byte stored in a same cache line follows spatial locality. But programs do not execute in sequential order because codes have branches. So they take different path. Depending on the branch taken, there can be or there cannot be more branches. So each path that a code actually takes is called a trace. The sequence of instructions that you execute in that path or a trace is known as instruction trace. So you take a sequence of code in which some instructions are branches. A path or a trace to that code will be some indication of whether you took the branch or not. Something like a decision. So a trace cache is a cache that records the instruction in the sequence in which they were fetched. Now let us consider an example when there is an unconditional branch. It means that you need to take the branch compulsory. So there is no use of the intermediate instructions in the cache line. So why not we create a cache that keeps traces that is not the instruction because they were sequential but the instructions in the way they were fetched. So here is the figure of a trace processor. It has a processing element which consists of a trace size instruction buffer. It has a multiple dedicated functional units. It has a local register files and a copy of global register. Here is the block for branch prediction where the branches are predicted. It is followed by instruction cache which stores all the instructions. This is the block where traces are constructed followed by a trace preprocess which goes directly into the trace caches. So here is a diagram of trace cache along with core fetch unit. So now let us try to understand what is the difference between the two. The core fetch unit can only fetch contiguous sequence of instructions. That is, it cannot fetch past the taken branch in the same cycle that the branch is fetched. The trace cache provides this additional capability. The trace cache is made up of instruction traces, control information and line fill buffer. So what is this line fill buffer used for? It is used to service the trace cache misses. The control information is similar to the tag array of standard caches but it contains some additional state information. 
so now let us try to understand each of this in the next slide so these are some of the trace cache components let us try to understand them in detail first one is valid bit this indicates that the trace is a valid second is tag it identifies the starting address of the trace third one is branch flags there is a single bit for each branch within the trace to indicate that the path followed after the branch is taken or not taken next is branch mask a state is needed to indicate the number of branches in the trace and also to indicate whether or not the trace ends in a branch next one is trace fall through address it fetches the address if the last branch in the trace is predicted and not taken this one is trace target address it fetches the address if the last branch in the trace is predicted and it is taken now that we know the trace caches component let's have a look at its selection criteria the address alone does not tell us a particular trace but the address combined with branch flag bits tell us whether the upcoming branch is taken or it is not taken so what we do is we concatenate the address with the branch flag bits that tells us which branch is taken in order to identify a particular trace so the cache line will now have the address of the starting instruction concatenated with the bits that indicates if the branch is taken or it is not taken so now let us consider an example these are all the instructions in a particular code with two branches one at c and one at h so what are the possible traces one trace will be a b c d e f g h and so on the second trace can be this branch is taken and this is not taken so it will be a b c h i j k let's consider the third case in which both the branches are taken so the instruction will be a b c h and then directly l so let us assume if the branch is taken the bit is 1 if it is not taken the bit is 0 so now will we have is tag address followed by two zeros for the first case since both the branches are not taken tag address followed by 1 for the first branch and 0 for the second branch not taken and here it will be tag address followed by two ones since both the branches are taken so here is an another example showing a traditional instruction cache and a trace cache so in a traditional instruction cache we use four different cache lines to store six instruction whereas in the trace cache they all will be in the single line since they are executed one after the other so now what are the conditions for a trace cache hit first one is the fetch address should match the tag address the second one is the branch prediction should match the branch flags so if it hits the entire trace line is executed what is the trace cache miss if it misses then the fetching proceeds normally from the instruction cache this is an example where a trace cache is used it is used in intel's pentium 4 processor here is the image of intel's pentium 4 processor with a block shown of the trace cache here are some of the variations that you can have in a trace cache the first one is a block based trace cache in this the instructions are stored in a block and each block contains a trace of instructions and the block is updated at the end of each instruction execution and each block has a different block id another variation is a software trace cache software trace caches are highly advantageous in large codes with few loops also if we combine the software and the hardware approaches we have found encouraging results so what are the conclusions that we can draw from the entire trace caches ppt the trace processors they definitely exploit the characteristics of the traces also the performance is significantly high but the only loophole is that they are very expensive in area power and the complexity is very high so they are not very widely used these are some of the references that i used while making the presentation this is the first paper on trace caches i hope you understood the concept of trace caches from the video and also the link to the presentation is given below thank you so much